Nintendo rewards Alexander. I get this many times. How does corruption actually work in Last Epoch? And it's actually quite simple, but there's a bunch of things you have to know. Because some people post online, right? They are running this build to like 3,000 corruption. So the question is, do you really need that? And the answer is no, but the long answer is kinda. So let's talk about it. First of all, what is corruption? If you go to the end game with the monoliths right here, right? These are the monoliths, monoliths of fate. At the end of time, you have these these areas over here. These are all the monoliths you can play, right? And so it only applies to this. It doesn't apply to the main game or the campaign. It's only the monoliths where you play. Then you go into a monolith, for example, this one. This is where I am. And then you go to this thingy. That's your monolith. And I'm already at the empowered ones. So this means the corruption is 100. You start with zero. And the maximum is 50 for these. So the empowered ones are 100, right? You see this also in the top left. This is your corruption. And it's basically, as it says, draw the, uh, the attention of Orobis or Orios, as Rex Centerex likes to call him. Great guy, by the way. Check him out. And it basically describes the, describes the difficulty of that monolith. If the corruption is higher, the enemies are stronger. They have more health. They deal more damage. They have more resistances. So it basically gets more difficult as well as the bosses. Benefit, of course, is you get better loot. It generally means higher corruption means rarer drops. And also, as you can see here, if you go further out in your monolith web, you get more of these unique uh, rewards for a monolith or for echo rather. These are echoes, right? Or an exalted one here. Um, these memory arena keys. There's another unique one. Idols. So you get more of these. I've actually got most of the um, the uniques and set items already on this one. So the drops are rarer. And people say, this is sort of the base idea, 200 to 300 corruption is sort of the sweet spot. At 200, it, you really start to get crazy drops, the, the insane ones with legendary potential and all of that. But 100 is for most people enough, I would say, to get your, your good your good uh, gear. But if you really want to maximize it, like 300 is the absolute maximum you, you really should go for. After that, it gets much more difficult, but you don't get much better drops. So this really doesn't really help. So to be honest, if people brag about their build being able to do a 2000 corruption or even 3000, it's just bragging rights. Or for content creators, because it draws uh, attention on the videos and clicks to them if they have a build that can deal with 2000 corruption, but it doesn't help you as a player. All right, this is for content creators and all that, that's fine. But you, if you want to get the most out of your build, you don't need that at all, right? You can start with 100 and that, that's totally fine. Like the empowered ones, and you can go up to 160 because some prophecies, I think, go to 160. Um, so if you can build up to that, that's fine. For now, I should say, uh, at the may time of making this video, but um, this might change. It also says down here, exclusive Echo rewards. In this timeline, Echoes can have rewards that grant unique or set body armor. One of the main benefits of a higher corruption is the faster timeline stability farming. This is the thing up here, right? Because what you want to do is you want to kill the bosses because they drop the great items, right? And they give you the most um, effects on these blessings. So you really only do these Echoes to get to the boss and maybe get these rewards, that's all fine. But if you have a higher corruption and beat an echo, you get faster timeline stability. So the bar fills up faster. So this is another great benefit of higher corruption. You can increase the corruption if you find Orobis or um, the gaze of Oreos. This is this guy over here. And you get to him the further you go out from this. This is your starting node right down here. This one. And the further you go out in the web from this. So basically, I guess somewhere around here would be... There comes an echo with a sort of citadel on it. And this is a fight against Orobis. And if you kill him, you get a corruption increase. Usually like 10 to 20. So you got to kill him like 5 to 10 times to get 200 corruption in this only monolith. So the corruption only applies to this monolith of fate. I'm currently on the blood, frost and death. It's alternate timeline. So you have to do this for each one of them. For your character. But you will eventually realize you won't do this for all your characters, right? Um, you, you just have one, like I have my um, Revlord, for example, to farm items and then give them to other 
characters, for example. You can, of course, do it with all you want, but you have to do all the things all over again every time. What people do, though, is get these blessings, so you can go over this. Fighting Orobis or Oreos over here is absolutely useless, right? Until you are at least with 100 corruption. Because if you go to the not empowered timeline, you, you get like four corruption increase if you kill him from zero to four. That does nothing. It's absolutely pointless. So do not try to fight him unless you actually got to 100 corruption. And you get there when you are... It is over here, this thing. Between the last ruin, the last one, Spirits of Fire and the Age of Winter and Reign of Dragons. This thing here. If you go, for example, here to that monolith, and then you have to walk there over these bridges. Come on. And then there is a thingy over here. It's this one. I did this already. If you are with your character, if you haven't been here, this is sort of glowing up. And if you click on it, this is where it can increase your corruption to 100. I wouldn't do this until you actually manage this monolith for the first time. D depending on your build, I guess. If you can easily take it, you can also do it earlier. You can start after the Reign of Dragons. You can go here right away. Um, and then if you go here, it goes. you can actually unlock the empowered monoliths. Like if I then go, for example, to... Um, yeah, whatever the... Frost thingy again. As you can tell, now if I go here, I can choose between normal and empowered. And this doesn't show up until you actually got to this bridge thingy up there and said you want to run empowered monoliths. Now when you have the 100 corruption and you can take take it easily with your build, then you can kill Orobis and increase corruption even more to 200, I think is enough for most people really to get good item drops. 100 already drops great items. And it, it depends a little bit on your build. If your build can easily, easily take these 100 corruption monoliths, then you can increase the corruption, because why not? But if it's tough, you gotta find a better build or uh, increase his, his levels some more. Another thing, the further out you go on this web, right, um, especially away from this, the, the closer you get to Orobis, finding him at the edge of the web, the stronger the monoliths also get. And the better the item drops are. As I mentioned, these over here, like these unique rewards, or the exalted ones, they are at the outskirts. If you can tell, in the middle, it's usually just runes and experience. And yeah, and there's not really great rewards close to this. The further out you go, the more difficult it becomes. Until you get to Orobis and increase your corruption. So, you want to find the sweet spot for your build, where your, where your character, or your build rather, can easily take the outer skirts of the monoliths, right? Can easily deal with them. I say easily, but easy enough. And you don't die. Because again, if you die in a monolith, you lose the reward. So you don't want to have this happen to you if you go for the unique item, because then it's gone, right? So this is sort of, you got to figure this out for yourself. It depends on your build, what it can do. I know many builds can, or not many, but some builds can take the 3000 corruption. But if you go to 200, 300, you got to figure out for yourself at the outer skirts, if, is it tough or is it easy enough to still get the rewards without dying? So yeah, in summary, that's pretty much it. Corruption means faster timeline stability. This is why you mostly want to do it and better loot drops, but also means higher difficulty. And again, you can increase it with one step over here. That's what you want to go for. But the first time I would highly recommend you go for uh, through all the monoliths first, get all your blessings, especially the last one, the last ruin, and then you increase your um, corruption. And one build that can easily do this, for example, is the one I'm running right now, which is the Wrath Lord one, with our big guy, with this helmet from Wrath Lord's Harbor. Uh, you can easily take the 100 corruption, no problem. And you don't need all these legendaries, by the way. You really only need this one. Um, the other ones help, of course, to make him even stronger, but this is uh, the, the only thing you do need, otherwise you don't have the Wrath Lord. But this can easily take it, and I'm, I'm going to make a video about this as well. But this was it for corruption. I hope it helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about it. And I will see you in the next video.